I have a case at the moment where the uh, parents were living together, um, lived together for five years, had two children. Um, the house is registered in the father's sole name and of course because they have two very young children the mother didn't work, she stayed at home and looked after them. While the mother was in hospital giving birth to the youngest child, which was earlier this year, the father changed the locks and evicted her from the house. Isn't that shocking? So the father changed the locks and evicted her from the house. She found herself in hospital, having just given birth to their infant child, homeless. Now, she does have claims against this father. She can claim child maintenance. Um, it is possible that she could make an application under the Children Act for the property to be transferred to her for the benefit of her and the children. But this isn't a wealthy family. And although she could make that application, there's absolutely no guarantee that it would be successful. If this couple had been married, there is no way that the father could have evicted the mother from the house. If she had been married to the father, she would also have been able to make claims against his income for her own benefit, as well as the children, and she would have had claims against his savings and his pension. And it wouldn't have mattered when the father's assets were acquired. Even if they had been acquired before the relationship, she would still have been able to make claims against them. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at a married couple, needs trumps everything. So the court's primary concern is to look at the party's needs, particularly the needs of any dependent children. That is the protection that marriage gives you that is not available to you if you are not married. When my daughter got pregnant with her first child and she was living with her partner, the first piece of advice I gave her was to get married. Marriage isn't for everyone and for those who decide that they want to have some form of uh, legal protection but they don't want to get married, a living together agreement is key. A living together agreement, if it's properly prepared and you both have legal advice, can deal with those issues. It can deal with what happens to the family home, if the relationship breaks down, who gets to live there, at what point it's sold. And this is something that you really should think about, particularly if you're going to have children together. So if you have a living together agreement and later decide to get married, there's no reason why you can't use that living together agreement as a prenuptial agreement if the circumstances are right. <laughs>